Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here again with the first of a new little side series of tutorials called 10 Minute Tips. So a lot of my tutorials are very project based, uh, building something out from scratch from the start to the beginning and setting up all the lights, cameras, rendering, going from Cinema 4D to After Effects. And I wanted to have a little smaller tutorials that kind of cover one little topic at a time, specific little situations and problems that come up and just little tips on one little topic on something that might have came up or has come up for me to kind of help on one little part and how I've dealt with it. So this first one is on integrating 2D images into Cinema 4D scenes and into some things that might come up and some tags to fix it. So let's just get right to it. Here I have the scene that's already set up. It's a couple numbers coming in and some lights and a camera swinging around and they have a plane effector to rotate them into place. So let's just take a look at this and kind of there's our shot and I'll do a quick shift render to kind of get an idea of what's going on here. So we have this little scene and this is what we're looking at. The lights are probably too blown out, but whatever, that's okay. And say that we want to integrate a 2D product image into this. We don't have a whole 3D model and this comes up pretty often. You just get a flat photo and I don't want to do it in After Effects because I want the reflections and I don't want to have to send stuff back and forth. So how would I do that? And some of the problems that come up along the way with relighting it. So we need an image and what's a good product image? Let's say 99% off, holy crap, that's a great sale. What could it be? How about this VCR? So I have this in Photoshop and what I want to do is make sure that the edges are transparent so we don't get edges there and I'll just save that as a PNG into my folder and save that as awesome VCR 02 in this case because I already had one from my test time and hop back into Cinema 4D. So how I'll do that is I want to grab a plane, rotate it into place of where I want it and this is going to be my image. So I'll just pull that over, scale that down, move it into place and get it kind of roughly where I want it enough to wrap up this tutorial in my goal of 10 minutes. So how I'm going to get that image on here is I can just double click to make a new material and I'm going to double click this and for color, I'm going to grab that same image that I just made. And for the alpha, I'm also going to use that same image so it knocks it out. And I'm going to turn off spec because I don't want it reflecting because it's just a flat image. And then I'll just drag that onto my plane and it's going to look huge so I can just scale it down and because it's defaulted to UV textures, it's going to scale to the front of it, which is fine. That's what I wanted. Now if I do a quick option R render and take a look at this, we can see that we run into a bit of a problem is if we look at our original VCR, it's kind of grayish and awesome as it was in the 80s. And because our lights that are lighting our numbers, it's getting this kind of reddish tint and that might not be what we want. And if you're working with a client project, they probably wouldn't want their awesome VCRs to look red because that's not how they look. So, so a little trick I kind of stumbled across when I was playing with the textures and probably didn't make up, uh, but is a good thing that at least I you know, figured out to deal with this is on the lights. If we go to project, we can exclude objects so they don't light those objects. So if we just have this flat image, we don't want that to catch the light. So we can just grab all of those, go to project and drag our VCR into it. And now they're not being lit. So what we could do is set up different lights for different objects, but that's kind of a pain in the ass. And it would take a long time to keep track of it, especially if you have a bigger scene. So what I figured out you can do is on our texture for the luminance channel, if we use that same image, it's basically going to use that for as much as I understand to light itself and bring that back as if it was not being lit by images, but kind of giving that color. So if I do another quick render to kind of AB this and compare where we are to where we were, this looks accurate. It's not being lit by our scene, but that's what we wanted. And we're still getting our reflections from Cinema 4D as compared to this one where it's being lit by our scene, but it might not be what we want. This is a pretty subtle example of this, of we're just getting this tint, but I have another copy of the same project over here and massively different textures. So if I do a quick shift R with this and ignoring that I don't have the settings up so the reflections don't look great, we can see that the light coming from this setup is a lot of the textures. So the red in here has luminance and reflection and an environment map to get some colors in there and there's not even lights in the scene so it's not as simple as just kind of ignoring it in this case we might want this black setup for these awesome VCR sales but we don't want to have to add lights to mess it up to light this so again what I can do is just grab this 2d image double click it go to luminance grab that same image 
do another quick render and we can see it's totally taking care of our problem and it actually looks more even with the lights on these numbers because they're being caused by all this luminance and they're being not a really easy way to get that other than this so when you're dealing with 2d images in 3d scenes these couple little tricks are a really helpful way to get them into your scene get them blended in kind of save the time of setting up object buffers and sending it to after effects for some compositing and fixing some of these lighting issues and if you're dealing with the flat 2d images like this one last little bonus thing you could do is if we look at our scene our camera's kind of swinging around in this case, and it's not too big of a camera move, but if we have the camera moving around a lot, the issue that could come up is, you know, this is just a thin plane, so if we don't see it from the right angle, it's going to kind of break the illusion that this isn't a real 3D object. So what we could do, is there's a tag to deal with that. If we right-click Cinema 4D tag, look at camera, but by default, it's going to kind of mess this up and put the brakes on my cool tutorial because it's going to point it at the wrong axis. But... What we can do is if we grab that VCR and put it in a null, so option G to group it, and then on that null, add that look at camera tag, and this is still gonna happen, but we can fix our cool flat VCR image layer to kind of get back into place enough to get through this tutorial, and it's gonna point this null at the camera. So we back up and play, you can see that it's still twisting around and making sure it's pointing at the camera. And that can be a really useful thing for these flat front-on 2D images that come up a lot when you're integrating products and big 3D numbers. And it's a couple little helpful tips to deal with some issues like the lighting and the pointing at camera that might come up with this. So I'll end it there. I don't want to run over 10 minutes and have to rename this little series. So I hope this was super helpful. Again, the Sean Frangella here. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube and Vimeo at slash Sean Frangella and check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash Vital, V-I-Y-T-A-L-E. And I'll see you at the next video. Thanks for watching.